health promotion. Um, I guess we'll just get it started with Dr. Pennington. She's going to say a few words. Good afternoon. Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my pleasure to be here, and I thank Caitlin for inviting me. I think that uh, the idea of this garden is an absolutely wonderful idea, and such a beautiful garden, we couldn't ask for anything more. The importance of being here, though, I think is not lost on any of us. Uh, smoking is something that I will admit I did for many years. I will also admit I liked it a lot. Uh, but at one point, I recognized, you know, what we've known for many years that it's just not a very smart thing to do and that it's a very dangerous thing to do and I'm happy to say that this year it'll be 27 years uh, since I gave up cigarettes and unfortunately too many people haven't learned that lesson and every day every day we lose too many people to illness to disease uh, children that are affected by secondhand smoke others of us who are for whom this habit uh, takes over and make such a tremendous deficit in people's lives. So I congratulate the health promotion staff for their work at trying to keep our campus safe, to try to impart upon everyone good habits, good healthy habits in terms of smoking and eating, drinking, sex, and all the other things that you work at every single day. You're a wonderful, wonderful part of our campus community, and I thank you for everything that you do on behalf of our students and our university. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pennington. Um, I guess right now I'm just going to explain some of the significance behind the garden. Um, it all started with uh, Rebel, which is an organization against uh, tobacco on campus. And uh, for the past couple of years, for Kick Butts Day, we've been doing 1,200 pinwheels in the quad, which re represents 1,200 lives that are lost to tobacco-related illness each day. And um, well, we've had kind of an adventure putting together the whole project, sticking the pinwheels in the ground and having them get lost. We thought we'd um, come up with something that was more permanent, something more environmentally friendly. So last year, at the end of the year, Tanya actually came up with the idea of a garden on campus that would be more permanent, serve as a constant reminder of the effects of tobacco. And so this year, we've worked to put this together, and this is what we have. So right now, Marie, I'm going to ask Marie to come up and talk about the impacts of tobacco on our lives. First of all, I have to say that I'm thrilled that the sun is shining because every year when we do this event, it's either raining or snowing. So, um, Smoking is the single most preventable cause of death and diseases. Um, cigarettes cause more deaths than cocaine, auto accidents, AIDS, alcohol, heroin, fire, suicide, and homicide combined. So that's a pretty significant um, and startling statistic. The cost of our society includes over 400,000 lives lost each year, 1,200 each day, and costs about $50 billion annually in lost productivity and healthcare related costs. Did you know that in most cases, the decisions to start smoking are not made by adults, but by young um, kids? 60% of smokers start by the age of 14, and 90% of smokers are already addicted by the time they reach the age of 19. Stated another way, only one in 10 smokers become addicted after the age of 19. Joe Camel is an example of one of the most effective marketing campaigns that was targeted specifically towards youth. Before this, Camel cigarettes were thought of an old man's cigarettes. Joe Camel ran from 1987 to 1997. During the peak of its time, Joe Camel was recognized in more than 90% of six-year-olds, um, making him as well-known as Mickey Mouse. By comparison, only 67% of adults recognized Joe Camel and equated him with a cigarette. So that tells you how powerful this campaign is. Did you also know that the amount of nicotine has increased steadily over the years, and now it's about 11.3% more than from 1998? This makes it easier for new smokers to become addicted quicker and for smokers that have become addicted to quit the habit make it even more challenging. Since this memorial project has been a year in the making, I have to really thank Caitlin for all of her hard work, commitment, perseverance, and tracking down a company that can engrave a stone that we needed to, um, and just for really pulling together all the resources and making this happen, because without your efforts, I think this garden would not be possible today. So thank you for that. Thank you, Marie. 
And uh, finally, our last speaker for the day is going to be our SGA president, Ron Chicken. Good afternoon, everyone. Now, the reason most of us are here at this ceremony today is probably because we already know the harmful effects of tobacco use. And this garden is a remembrance to all those lives that are cut short each day as a result of long-term tobacco use. According to the American Council on Drug Education, tobacco use is the leading preventable cause of premature death in the United States. But it is preventable. It is estimated that directly or indirectly tobacco causes more than 400,000 deaths in the U.S. annually. There are approximately 47 million smokers in the U.S., about 23% adult smokers, and 30% of adolescents smoke. It's widely acknowledged that people who haven't used tobacco by age 21 are likely to remain non-smokers, as Dr. Cascano was pointing out earlier. Now, while some people enjoy their right to smoke and do not feel they abuse the substance or use it enough to cause significant harm to their body, we are still gathered here today to promote healthy living in our community. We want to educate those who are not aware of the effects of tobacco use, not just from smoking cigarettes, but also from chewing and even pipe tobacco. Let us also remember that some of us, when some of us choose to smoke, it doesn't just affect ourselves, but it also affects those around us who may not be wishing to use tobacco. Secondhand smoke, or passive smoke as it is also known, is equally, if not more harmful to those around a smoker than to the smoker themselves. Passive smoking is the process that causes non-smokers to inhale smoke involuntarily. This smoke has neither passed through a filter or through the lungs of a smoker and is therefore extremely potent, containing more tar, nicotine, particles, gases than inhaled smoke. And this smoke can also cause respiratory distress, allergic reactions, as well as lung cancer. Now, as the president of the SGA here at MSU, many students have brought their concerns about smoking on campus to my attention. Many of these students have expressed their extreme displeasure with the smoking on campus near the entryways to buildings. After discussion with various administrators, faculty, staff, and students, we hope to start an awareness campaign to encourage those students who smoke on our campus to be mindful about where they smoke so that they do not cause other members of our community to be exposed to secondhand smoke. I hope this issue will be carried forth uh, this spring and also next year. As we plant this garden here today and dedicate it, let it serve as a reminder, as well as our new recreation center should as well, about making smart choices in our life each day and encouraging others to also practice healthy living. Thank you, Ron. And again, I just want to thank you guys all for coming. Um, it's been really great. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Spencer Carpenter, the Director of Ground Services, Mike Zenko, the Director of Campus Planning, and Tanya and Marie, and everybody else that did Health Promotion that have really helped me put this thing together this year. So thank you guys for coming. Uh, we have cake and coffee in the drop-in center. So if you guys wanna head over there with us now. Thank you.